Welcome to The Champagne Way, a podcast devoted to living every day like a celebration. Oh, hey, friends. Welcome to The Champagne Way, episode 15. In this episode, we're going to be talking college flashbacks, hidden gems, and your summer checklist. Are y'all ready for this? We're ready. We're ready. So, Jess, what's in our cup? We are drinking Tara Lynn extra dry sparkling wine all the way from California. Um, and it apparently has hints of white flower, whatever that tastes like, and green apple. What do you guys think? It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, actually, now that you say there's green apple, yeah. I can kind of taste that. Me too. Mm-hmm. Me yeah. too. Yeah. It's kind of tart. It's kind of tart. Yeah. Definitely mm-hmm. a tart flavor to it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty delicious. Yeah. I'm not really sure what the white flower is, but um, it's good. It's a delicious white flower. Yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, do we have some champagne chat outs this week, guys? I've got one. Oh, go for um, it. I was out of town um, over the weekend, mm-hmm. and when I came back home, there was a lovely surprise on my front porch, Ooh. and apparently, it came from my future brother-in-law and my sister, but she gave him the credit because <laughs> they were shopping for their wedding, and she had went on to a different aisle, and all of a sudden, she he was just like, oh my God, we have got to give this for your sister and she comes around the corner and he's holding this box that has a giant champagne glass in it and that you can put an entire bottle of champagne in this one glass yes so that was that's my champagne shout out for the week goes to jason jason get three next time get three yes (laughs) but yeah super awesome gift from both of them and it was hilarious and i can't wait to use it that's great yeah it's really fun love it Lindsay? So I have one from a listener named Marshall, and he wants to shout out his wife, Trina, for taking care of him while he was sick and getting um, his medicine situated. Um, He pretty much said, you are awesome. Love it. Um, And I actually, I feel like our, our champagne shout outs are very inner circle this week, but I actually have one to Marshall. Our producer, um, because he actually just went out and got us a bottle of champagne while we're recording right now. We needed another one and got us what I just uh, think was the best ice cream I've ever had. Um, So he just went and got us that, which we're going to talk about uh, later. So if you want to know what that tastes like or you want to hear it described, stay tuned. We're going to talk about it. Um, So, yeah, shout out to Marshall, our producer. Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Yes. It is super, super delicious. That's so good. So yay, champagne shout outs. Yep. Yes, yes. Cheers to y'all. Yes. Cheers. All right. So college flashbacks. I feel like I need to like look directly at Lindsay because most of my college flashbacks somehow have like her popping up in them so and that's that's that is a compliment like well i have so many i can remember and probably a lot more i can't for (laughs) multiple reasons i mean this could literally take a whole day for me to talk about (laughs) well what's like what's the big one that comes to mind well this comes to mind because it's something i was talking about with co-workers earlier today i don't know how we got on this subject um but so one of my first memories of college, I was the first person in my family to go to college. I didn't really know what to expect. I went two hours away and I was hanging out with a bunch of sorority girls and neither of you were there at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were about 30 girls in this apartment. We were having like this little party um, for somebody's birthday and they had hired a stripper to come in oh. i'm assuming a male stripper a male stripper okay and so we were all excited you know i was 18 and i'd never seen that nothing so this, <laughs> we get a knock on the door and this guy comes in he probably had to have been in his 40s with like <laughs> longer blonde hair his skin looked like leather 
So he starts taking off his clothes and we're like little, you know, tiny college girls. So we're like giggling like this poor guy was probably mortified. Finally takes off his pants, y'all. He has a wooden peg leg. No. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Stop he, it. Yes. A so wooden you, peg leg. You had a one-legged male stripper yes. in his 40s. In his 40s. <laughs> Wow. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Uh-huh. You ever wonder like where where did his life like go to lead to that moment? <laughs> I'm thinking if you're a one legged stripper with a wooden peg leg, like your whole theme should be like a pirate theme. Right. 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 But it was not. Oh, what was I it? I don't think he had a theme. He just had like one of those weird silky satiny shirts on. Mm-hmm. Oh, he missed his calling. Yeah, he really did. I mean, he could have really played into that. I think people would have hired him just for that. Yeah, especially after Pirates of the Caribbean came out. I True. mean, he could have done a whole thing with that. Yeah. Anyway, that so that's my first stripper story. Well, well I'm, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you you got to keep going. Like, what did? How did y'all react? Uh, we laughed so hard. Like that poor guy. Like looking back, I'm like, bless his heart. And his leg. (laughs) But like he, whatever we paid him was not enough. Now, I do remember. So after I moved into this apartment (laughs) with you guys, Uh because, you know, if uh, if you haven't been listening to the podcast, I think we've talked about it at one point in time. Like Lindsay's the first person I met in Tennessee because I randomly moved into an apartment with her and two other girls. And I remember seeing some of the pictures from this party, (laughs) like on like a little photo board at one point in time and thinking like, okay, these girls are going to be fun, you know? (laughs) But um, one of my best college flashbacks would be actually the day I moved in with you guys and you threw a party. This was the best day ever. The day I moved in. Well, clearly, because you knew somehow deep down that you were going to meet me and it was going to be like hello, here's a new best friend. <laughs> like, you might as well get used to it. This is what we do. That is true. And uh, it's funny because it, this comes up over and over again in my life because there's so many people that I met at that party in college <laughs> that I still, like, see every once in a while working in the music industry because they work in it too. <laughs> and there are times when people are like, how do you know that guy? How long have y'all known each other? I'm like, well, since the very first day I moved to college, <laughs> when my roommates threw a party. <laughs> so that that's come up over and over again. That's like the one college flashback that I keep having. <laughs> and I just feel really sorry for your boyfriend at the time, because when Trina moved to Tennessee, she was dating a guy from Florida. And he pretty much was like driving her and dropping her off in Tennessee and be like, bye, I'm back to Florida. And so he comes up and she's like living with these three crazy girls that he doesn't know and they throw a party and they have a bunch of frat guys at the party too so oh, naturally no. he felt super comfortable about his stance uh-huh. <laughs> now i mean clearly we ended up breaking up but we, we we stayed together for a little while after that but i definitely could see the hesitation in his eyes like oh god oh god why am i leaving her here for this it was like all those stereotypical stories that you hear and like no i mean it's gonna be fine she moved into with three sorority girls Oh, well, speaking of sorority girls, <laughs> let's talk about my first frat party. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. How was that? Well, uh, it was my f- third week into college, my second week into the sorority, where I be- met both of these lovely ladies. Mm-hmm. But this party did not happen with either of them in attendance. I don't think we'd met yet. That means we might have been there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I was with other like connected friends, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was at the AGR house. So that meant there was a giant tractor in front. Yes. I, I went there. I went to this party. It was the country boy frat house. It was the country boy frat house. Um, I spent most of the party talking to a random AGR boy that I was like, this is weird. You're nice. But no. Ran smack dab into a uh, boy that was like in my poli sci class like you know just one of those 10 10 poli sci classes I feel like you almost just said his name <laughs> <laughs> you were so close yeah i was friends with him on facebook for a while um i think he's married now <laughs> um but you know we talked for a while made out in a corner yeah um, you know. yeah you did <laughs> um and then ended the night in a car 
which was being driven very responsibly by a friend who was DDing, um, and sat on the lap of the future uh, sorority president. <laughs> That's how we roll. <laughs> I, this is not my finest moment. I threw up out of one side of the car. Another friend, another sorority sister was sitting on the lap of another sorority sister. She threw up out of the other side of the car <laughs> simultaneously. <laughs> oh, college. And that was my first rap party. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And that was my college. Fl- that was like my first like big like college flashback. And I was like. Uh, I guess this is how college is. But do you, does everyone want to know what happened? I made it to my, because I was a freshman, and little did I know, you didn't take Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 a.m. classes, <laughs> but I did because it was my first semester. Everyone, I made it to my 8 a.m. class. Polly Sai, um, and I saw that same boy there. <laughs> that just, did he like, make it? Wow. You know what? Kudos to both of you then. Because yeah. I don't think I would have. Uh, nope. Mm-mm. Although I do feel like we all could have a story at some point in time of like making out with a random guy at a frat party somewhere. and Not me, yeah. never. Ever. Not and, you, never. And ever. that same boy gave me mono by that December. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Wow. The story just gets better and better. <laughs> and that's my college flashback. Oh, wow. Well, so going back to my college flashback, because this your story kind of reminded me of this uh-huh. that first party that was at the apartment uh that i lived in with Lindsay on my first night of moving in when i'm sitting there at this party trying to get to know everybody i'm talking to Lindsay because she has like candy and some other stuff out on the tables and stuff and she makes a comment about how a party of theirs one time got broken up because or, or not necessarily broken up, but like the cop showed up and she had a bowl full of sugar cubes and they confiscated them and she didn't understand why. And little old Trina from Florida instantly was like, oh, it's clearly because they thought there was acid on them. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I just remember you telling me this story and so I'm going to let you go into that story here in a oh, second, but that has stuck with me forever and just being like, wow, what was Florida like? Because <laughs> I instantly <laughs> knew like, oh, that's why. <laughs> Yeah, so we it, it was a house party. I think we even had a keg. Um, anyway, the cops came. They could care less about the keg. And they saw my sugar cubes. And I did have little treats out for people to snack on. And, you know, for some reason, I was just really eating the sugar cubes then. I have no idea why. <laughs> they are cute and delicious. They yeah. are. And so the cop, they're like, they like cornered me in my room. And I was like crying. They're like, what are these sugar cubes for? And I'm like... For people to snack on and they're like are there drugs in these sugar cubes and i was like mr officer i'm a poor college kid <laughs> and if i had money for drugs i wouldn't be able to share them <laughs> <laughs> and they're like we're gonna take these sugar cubes and if they test positive for drugs we're gonna be back they never came back I, they probably they just, went outside and ate them. They probably <laughs> went and like got some coffee and used them for their coffee and was like, they're like, wow, well, yeah, there it, are no drugs. On it these. was really sugar cubes. It was really sugar cubes. It's like if they had known Lindsay, they would have been like, yeah, that's like innocent enough. Like she really would have just been like, I want sugar. Uh, did they compensate you for stealing your sugar no, cube? No, they did not. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's their top priority. Nope. <laughs> but, I mean, in their defense, that is like a wide known thing. I, t- I did take a, co- a criminal justice class in when I was in high school. It was a college class. And uh, they did talk about all of those different things because drugs in Florida, it was like the rave scene was so big. Mm. Like people would take liquid LSD or whatever, and they, they'd put it on sugar cubes and Starburst. And I want to say gummy bears, or maybe that was like a later thing. Like, mm. But people used to put that on those things because I, I don't know it must taste bad or something because they would put it on sweet stuff and people would eat it and yeah, yeah. well just saying mine were just sugar cubes just sugar cubes if they'd come to dinner they would have probably wonder why our mashed potatoes were pink because i would put those little glitter baking sugars oh, in the yeah. mashed potatoes when nobody was looking <laughs> so you had sweet <laughs> mashed potatoes but not sweet potato mashed potatoes <laughs> and very interesting very interesting anyway <laughs> wouldn't put it past you <laughs> whatevs um well speaking of other college flashbacks uh i posted a picture the other day 
on my personal face or not Facebook, my personal Instagram. And we're going to have to share it on our Instagram because Marshall and I look like babies in this picture. <laughs> oh, like, man. A friend of mine texted me today and she was like, oh, my God, you look like you're 16 in this photo. And I was like, well, we were clearly at least like 22 to 23, maybe 24, because I can't tell if it was while we were still first in college. Thing that popped up. Or <laughs> like, I don't know if it's when we were first like when we were still in college and first dating or if it was like later on, like after we'd been dating for a little while, we're clearly in the airport. I know we're in the airport in the picture, but oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. That picture makes me feel really old really quickly because I'm looking at it going, holy crap, I used to look like that. Holy crap, I look like this now. Yeah, flashback right there. And I still can't place where we were going, but I feel like that was either from judging by my hoodie, like I feel like I had that when I went to California to visit my sister when she lived out there, which probably means I was closer to 25 in that picture. I like Marshall's shirt that says country boy. Oh my gosh, he cannot get over the fact that he wore a shirt that says country boy. <laughs> John and Deere shirt. Like a John Deere tractor shirt. <laughs> he saw that picture, which by the way, but neither of us, like I think, knew this picture existed. Um, we were visiting his grandmother this weekend and that happened to be one of the pictures that she keeps with her at the nursing home and was like, uh-huh. we pulled it out and saw it and we were instantly both like, oh my God, take a picture of that picture. <laughs> like, we look so, so young. Wow. Oh, so young, guys. I love it. Okay, so we're going to be posting this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need a, a picture of you guys now, so... You can compare yeah. how old we've gotten. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I can maybe make that work. We'll, we'll try to recreate the yes. picture when we're at the airport here coming up soon. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you need, you need to recreate that. <laughs> you don't look that much different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like way skinny and way tan in that picture. Tan. <laughs> I had a, another friend comment on it that was just like, whoa, that's like way back to our lifeguarding days. And I was like, yeah, can you tell by my nice bronze tones here? <laughs> <laughs> but oh yeah, gosh. we'll have to we'll have to pull out some good old college flashback pits and maybe like post some of those on our. I, I think we all will. Yeah. yeah. I know we can definitely find some frat ones. I've definitely seen some pictures of some toga parties or any of the dress-up oh, yeah. ones. Oh, yeah. The Halloween parties. Oh, those were so good. We were, when we were moving and emptying out boxes, I found a floppy disk. Oh, my God. Thank God I can't look at those now. I just threw it away. I'm like, there's <gasps> no telling what is on this floppy disk. Lindsay, why did you throw it away? Well, I, how am I going to look at a floppy disk? Girl, we can we'll, libraries. <laughs> libraries. Will could have taken it to Union City. Uh, his dad's work definitely has oh, some too bad computers. I threw it away. Dang it. <laughs> That's okay. Every time I move, I always find like one of those old disposable cameras. Uh-huh. And like, I know I've got at least two somewhere around this house that still need to be developed but every time i'm like should i Mm, maybe let's wait another 10 years (laughs) most of mine's like spring break and i'm like nope (laughs) nope nope nope. don't know if i want to relive any of those moments again i i've I've got a i got a few still trapped in there (laughs) yeah all right so uh speaking of ice cream um we're going to talk about (laughs) hidden gems in the city uh yes so this came about because this last week uh, around fourth of july marshall and i on the fourth of july we, we we needed to do something to to make our day a little bit better and randomly i was like i want ice cream and he was like i want ice cream too and i said google like the best ice cream places in nashville i was like i don't want your standard dairy queen sonic mm-hmm. nothing against them love them but i was like i want an ice cream shop And so he looked up like the top 10 ice cream shops in Nashville and randomly came up with one that was right down the street from our house. And so we were like, well, let's go try it. It seems like it'd be cool. And I'm going to completely butcher the name because it's definitely like in Spanish. It's La La Michoacana Premium, something like that. It's it's very interesting. Uh, If you want to Google it, it's L-A-M-I-C-H-O-A-C-A-N-A. And we went in there. Nobody spoke English. <laughs> like nobody spoke English. But in, in the, the ice cream shop was huge. Mm. But you go up to the counter and they had all these pictures all around the room. They have TV screens everywhere with all the different desserts they have on it. And 
they have these amazing like fruit pops they have these like displays of fruit type desserts and icy pops and like you can tell everything's fresh made all different types of ice cream like flavors that you aren't gonna see at like baskin robbins even with their 31 flavors i feel like this place got a beat mm-hmm. and then so we ended up trying the ice cream and it was the freshest like most delicious ice cream i guarantee it's not fat free at all (laughs) (laughs) but it was creamy it was delicious and marshall went and got us some tonight so that everyone could try some yeah he did so good so good it did it was like fresh creamy and we had one with the ferrera 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 rocher Rocher. yeah it's like a uh, hazelnut type Uh candy type chocolate thing and there was that scoop and then there was a scoop with like M&M's and some other stuff. I don't even actually know the name of the ice cream because I'm just like the one with the M&M's. But because <laughs> I think they actually did have a name there. But again, it was in Spanish. Mm. If it's like a party scoop, like you said, Trina. <clears throat> yeah, it looked like it looked like party in a bucket. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't like whatever Halo Top, whatever 300 calories to your pint. I don't care. This was probably like 600 calories for this thing. But it was so creamy and... Worth every bite. (laughs) It was, guys, it was so good. So, and and I have, I, when Trina showed me the pictures, I was like, oh, I have been there. And I I have tried their, like, fruit popsicles. And they're so good. It's like they puree kiwi and, like, freeze it. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, it's so fresh and delicious. But I'd never tried their ice cream until tonight. And I was like, well... I'm this is like once a week I want to come here and yeah. I definitely would qualify this as a hidden gem of the city because yes it's, it's off the beaten path it's not where you'd expect in like the touristy side of town <clears throat> or the popular hipster side of towns and most of the the ice cream shops that came up on there were like your hipster unique kind of ice cream blends where it's six dollars a scoop and all that and so it was kind of nice to try something that was literally right down the street um kind of has a cultural flair to it which i thought was really neat Mm -hmm. and like affordable and just delicious uh i mean definitely definitely hidden gem worth trying to go find um but that got me thinking where what are the other hidden gems in the city like mm-hmm. what are and how do you find them like when you're thinking of trying something new do you google it when you're visiting someplace new do you ask for recommendations like so tell me some of your stories guys hidden gems i mean like like for here i guess google i mean i also always rely on like our local publications like the national scene is usually great for something like that like if you have or whatever city you live in if you have like a local free publication they're usually good for um you know your local restaurants or something like that or if you have like free um art exhibits or anything like that if you you know, just want to go out somewhere for a day, I feel like that would be great. Um, I know when we went to London, um, we, you know, I was Googling like mad. I was looking up Rick Steves, who is really good for traveling um, advice. He has a podcast. So I was like, he has a travel podcast that's like up to, I don't know, like 500 episodes. And so I was trying to listen to any episode that had anything to do with London Because he would sometimes give advice about, like, his favorite pub or something like that. Which, I mean, then all the tourists know about it. But, you know, he tries to adhere to stuff that, like, the locals might like. Which I think is, like, really important. So I would try to look up stuff like that. But what I finally tried to do for the local gym that ended up being, like, the best thing for us uh, was I talked to my friend Melissa that I went to grad school with. Um, Her roommate, Natasha, is from London, um, and her dad, so sorry, we were trying to go for an authentic Indian food, which is really big over in the UK, and I I don't mean like, oh, like, kind of like, oh, some Indian, I mean like, oh, whatever. I love Indian food. (laughs) Like, good Indian food, like, legit good Indian food, and so that's really big thing, and uh, so my friend Melissa her roommate Natasha is from London and her dad is Indian. And so Natasha like sent us an Indian restaurant recommendation and it was like off in Whitechapel, which was like quite a far tube ride away. 
but it was like we got off and it was like in a residential neighborhood like we had to walk quite a ways but it ended up being like freaking amazing like Mm -hmm. great garlic non bread like I couldn't read half the menu like I was like I don't know what this is I'm gonna have to like google what this is but probably not I'm just gonna guess um, but like, that's what it was. So sometimes I feel like it's just through the grapevine word of mouth. You just have to like ask around for a friend recommendation. I feel like that's the best way. Me too. So my, one of the best hidden gems in Murfreesboro is this place called Clearview Cafe and it's a meet and three and it's near the square, but it's not like walkable and it is like this soul country kitchen and they have hot water boiled cornbread mm. oh wow oh y'all it is to die for like i think we should all take off work tomorrow and go okay that does sound super delicious mm-hmm. <laughs> i'd say the I've, I've had some that were like word of mouth especially on facebook now that you can get recommendations for mm-hmm. like where you're going mm-hmm. and it'll even throw it on a map for you <clears throat> when i went to st louis for the first time uh marshall and i took a random trip there because we had airline credit that was going to expire and i was not going to let them take it away from me Mm -mm. so we literally picked like the cheapest flight which we'd always wanted to do anyways which was to st louis which is also like a four-hour drive away so it was the shortest flight ever (laughs) but (laughs) we went there flew in like on a friday night and flew back on sunday because i had an awards thing to go to that Mm -hmm. night so it was like the shortest trip ever but like it was also first time airbnb and we took our airbnb host like because we stayed in the house with the host oh um and ended up going out pub hopping with them on that Friday night. They told us different places to go to on that Saturday night uh, around the city. So we got fun. some really like unique experiences from that. But that's how we found City Museum. A lot of people had recommended that on Facebook. And then mm. our host recommended it. And that was probably the coolest experience I've ever been to. Is that that act, like activity outdoor? Oh, it's like indoors and outdoors. Mm-hmm. Like you crawl around through tunnels. You go on slides in the building that are from like this the the roof of the building all the way down to the ground. It was so cool. I was so bruised up the next day because of crawling around in that place, but so <laughs> worth it. Like you can't be afraid of heights and go to this place. Uh, <laughs> I want to go. But I've never been there. It was so cool. And it so was. affordable mm-hmm. too. It was like 10 bucks a person for like the entire day. Oh, wow. So it was, that's is like, and that's not necessarily a hidden gym. Cause if you look up St. Louis, it's going to say, go to the arch and go to city museum. But it's like, we had never heard of it until we got there. And we asked for recommendations. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and same thing for our first trip to New York. Of course, there are a million things that people can mm-hmm. tell you to do. And so mm-hmm. we almost got overwhelmed with it. But then while we were there, some of the people that were there for the event that I was there for, that were my guest speakers, they were meeting up with some, um, family members of theirs that were there that went to college in the area. And, so we ended up at this random taco place in New York City. And then from there, walking around the block and going to this ridiculous karaoke bar, which was probably the most fun karaoke bar I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, and I was there, funny enough, with a songwriter who wrote some of the songs that we ended up requesting for people to sing karaoke to. So it was like even better. Love it. Like it was just this great experience. And it all happened from like word of mouth and like finding these little hidden gems in the city that, mm-hmm. you know, you didn't expect. I don't even know the name of that taco place, but I would go try to find it in New York City because it had some <laughs> of the best tacos I've ever eaten. Uh, see? So, yeah. so, so sometimes you just kind of have to ask and... Sometimes you wing it. Or that's venture right. around and... Yeah. yeah. You know, try that's, new places. That's how I think we're going to be with our trip to Seattle coming up because mm-hmm. I've asked a couple recommendations, but it's almost too overwhelming because yeah. there's so much to do there. So, so when we went to Athens, Greece, the outside of all the buildings look like they're condemned. And, but the insider is gorgeous. So like when we put up at our hotel, I'm like, Jay, there is no way I'm staying here. Like, no, we're going to find another place. And I went in and there was like chandeliers and this rooftop pool and bar. Like it was unreal. So a lot of the places that we went and ate, it was scary from the outside, but amazing on the inside. I think places like that are just so cool. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like you have to look past the outside to see how amazing it is on the inside. Yeah. I don't know. So it's like you just kind of walk around and sometimes you just kind of look at the menu or just kind of look inside and you're like, oh, I think I'm just going to try this place. Mm-hmm. And I found bars like that here in Nashville mm-hmm. where I've just kind of wandered around downtown one time when I couldn't stand to watch the hockey game anymore mm-hmm. on Broadway. And I've just ventured up and walked around and been like, I don't know this bar, but it looks really cool inside and they have this really cool sounding 
martini drink and I'm going to walk inside and try it at the bar and there it is. Yep. So that's one of Marshall and I's favorite things to do is to stumble around a city and mm-hmm. like go where stumble. we hear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, because usually we'll go for a cocktail or something like that. And like if we we kind of like go by our ears since we're musical yeah. people, like we'll listen, especially if it is a musical city. And if we see, not see, but we hear something we like and it's live music like we'll go inside just to check it out like yeah that that's why we're happens. such good friends my musical voice you, it draws you it guys. just draws, it just draws me in. In. Uh-huh. it totally does yeah, yeah so there's all kinds of ways so um but yeah so you listeners friends let us know how you guys uh find hidden gems in your cities or cities that you visit we're always looking for new ways to find those things. So mm-hmm. definitely Absolutely. hit us up on our socials and tell us about your favorite hidden gems. Mm-hmm. We want to know. So July 4th is over and we're in mid-July already. And I'm, I'm already in that like mode of like summer's already almost over. Thank which, God. I mean, <laughs> I am pretty excited because I'm so tired of it being so hot. Like I'm ready for the fall. I'm sure you are too. Well, there's just no reason to it for it to be this hot unless you're by the pool. That's true. If you don't have any vacation scheduled because you just had a baby, like there's not like there's no reason for summer. I'm just ready to skip summer. I need some cool weather. I need some orange leaves. I need some Halloween costumes. And then I need some fork and snow. Fork and snow would be nice. Well, and even in the north, it's really uh, exceptionally warm right now. I think even in New York and such, it got up to like 90 degrees. Yeah. On some days. It, and it, it's been like, it's felt like that here. But it did get me thinking the other day because clearly summer is not over. And I feel like also every year summer kind of like I'm ready for it to happen and then I get to the 4th of July and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh no, it's it's fleeting. It's going away really quickly. And I've kind of got like this summer checklist and the older I get, the the more I'm like, it seems like I don't spend my summers the same way that I used to, obviously. Mm-hmm. College, as we talked about, like was a lot more fun. It was like by the pool. Of course, I was a lifeguard back then too. It was so always by the pool. It just seems like even always. when I wasn't working by the pool, I was at the apartment by the pool. I was with friends by the pool. Like we took all of our time away from work and school to like hang out with people and do summery things summer cookouts were a big thing i'm like lucky if i can fit in one summer cookout any summer and i knew work obviously takes away a lot of that but like so i started thinking about this summer checklist and like what is on my checklist for this summer that i must complete for me to feel like this summer wasn't a complete wash and so that made me think like what's on y'all's summer checklist Mm. Mine personally right now is the fact that I have a brand new unicorn pool float that has yet to come out of the box. (gasps) I know. It's blasphemous. It's horrible. I got that on the Amazon treasure truck and it Mm. needs to be used. Yeah, it does. (laughs) It was an impulse buy, but it was the best impulse buy. And now I just need to use it. So my goal is sometime before the summer ends is to go floating down a stream in this, this tube. Yeah. I mean, clearly, it needs to happen. Trina, if worse comes to worse, just go downtown and plop it in the Cumberland. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm oh, going to do that anytime maybe soon. Maybe not. If worse comes to worse, I'll go put it in the pool at, like, the neighboring complex <laughs> and float around in the pool with it. I'll but... get Rory a pool, and you can stick it in that. <laughs> there It'll you probably go. be bigger than her pool. I mean, but I really would like to, at some point in time, go floating down a stream in this. Worst case scenario, I'll go to the pool with it. But, like, I've been to the pool once this summer. We're talking mid-July, guys. Once. I've been been in a bathing suit once this entire summer. I'm twice. I'm twice. Oh, my gosh. What happened to us, guys? We're old. (laughs) Work got in the way. We're adults. Like, why are we having to go to work every day? Well, and that's the thing. Even when I was in college, I worked. I did classes. But I still went to the pool when I got off work. That's what it was. You went to the pool when you got off work. You would get off work or get off class and go get in your your bathing suit and then go go lay but out. I feel like we had more access to pools as well. That's true. We did. Yeah. As soon as you get older and you buy a, a house or something and it doesn't have a pool, you lose your access to a pool. <laughs> I have a pool in my apartment complex. They just redid it and it's brand new and nice. But you know what? I like came home from work today and started working on a freelance project or I leave work and go to the gym. Oh. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just I, it's not a priority anymore. No. I think we need to bring that back in our lives, ladies. 
Yeah, summer yeah. checklist. I'd more like to relive time. some of those college pool days. I know they were so much fun. There was one with body paint. What? Anyway, what? <laughs> I really love that one. I feel like we put too much pressure on like doing and like making it an event to go to the pool. Like you right. have to get your bags, you have to get your food, you have to bring your music, you have to do all these things. And back in the day, it was just like you have to grab a towel and you have to go to the pool. So yeah. maybe yeah. we just need to make it a little more chill and just go. Like even for an hour. You know, after yeah. work. All right. My summer checklist is I want to shotgun some beers. What? Shotgun some beers. Yeah. I think we can make that happen. Yeah. While we're floating downstream. Sure. We've heard of Cabruin. We can go c- Cabru tubing. <laughs> so I shotgun some beers last year um, at my sister-in-law's uh, bachelorette party in Florida. Mm-hmm. And she would never done it. So I was showing her how to do that. And then my mother-in-law got really interested, uh, but she doesn't like beer. So, y'all, she was funneling wine. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Like, I literally have the best mother-in-law ever. That is fantastic. It was great. Love so, maybe it. we just need to take our champ- champ bongs and go funnel some champ- champagne at the pool. Yeah. <laughs> done. Yeah. And then you can, you can shotgun a beer. And, yes, um, what is on your summer checklist? Well, let me just add to the water list. Um, because we're we're there, um, we've uh, my fiance Will and I have only gone kayaking once, and we I purchased a kayak last summer at the beginning of last summer, and you know we kayaked a lot. We've only done it once, and I think it's because we've just been out of town and the summer's slipping by. Well, you've had some pretty great. No, trips. okay, I know we've had some great trips, um, but we've only kayaked once, and like I want to get out on the water, and mm-hmm. I'll cook a brew kayak or whatever <laughs> there new plan yeah so we're gonna get Lindsay a tube as well and okay what we're gonna do is tie those tubes to the back of your kayaks and yeah you and will can kayak while pulling us downstream okay you won't have right. to go to the gym again for the rest of the year all right, That's right. You're pulling my big butt and we'll we'll just make sure that we um have like a little floating cooler tied between our tubes mm-hmm. and that can have some some beers and okay maybe some of those little champagne cans yeah i usually take some of the uh sophia the little champagne sophias or some of the uh alcoholic seltzer which is also very nice to drink on the river Mm -hmm. it's very refreshing i think we've got a plan we need to make this happen guys so that yeah that's our summer i mean i feel like that's a real good start to the summer checklist Mm -hmm. that's right i don't know what else is on my summer checklist i mean I don't think I'm going to get camping in. I'd like to camp. I don't think that's going to happen. I usually focus camping on like the like the switch between the seasons from from summer to fall because oh, fall, you don't want winter. it to get cold. You don't want it to be cold when you're camping, but you don't want it to be hot and full of like mosquitoes. It's so. never yeah. cold. Well, in Tennessee, no, it can be. It's never. It's or, never been it's cold. It's never in been cold. <laughs> it has, but mm. <laughs> or like hiking. I really wanted to hike more, but it's been... horrible. <laughs> no, it's so fun. I just I like how Jess is like very active, and I'm just like I want to shotgun some beer, and you're like I want to float my float. <laughs> It's like, I'm going to go hiking and then kayak five miles and then we'll hike again. Look, it's because I was just in some <laughs> national parks. I was just in like some national parks uh, recently. Guys, I forgot to tell everyone, listeners and everyone, I just saw a little baby bear. Oh, my God. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you shoot it? No. no. <laughs> uh, Let's see. <laughs> sorry. I just saw a little baby black bear. Um, and so it made me want to go hiking and see more wildlife. Every time I hear about like bears and wildlife on like trails, I think of my first time going to uh, Gatlinburg and going into Cades Cove and everyone stopping on the side of the road because there were like two baby bear cubs in a pear tree. <gasps> like, Aww. I didn't know. I like that's a nursery rhyme. <laughs> I didn't know bears <laughs> could climb trees, let alone they like yeah. climb gigantic pear trees because pear trees are very in large. A pear tree. And that's yeah, a Christmas song. And we stayed there for a little bit. And watch the cubs like going across the field and climbing up the tree. I think a third one came out, and that's about the time that uh, the people I was with were like, "Hey, we should probably get in the car and go." And I was like, "But why?" And they were like, "Because Mama Bear is coming. She's got to be somewhere." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, we should go." <laughs> See, y'all say bear. I'm like, "Ooh, I need a bearskin rug." 
No. No. It would be pretty um, in the living room. Yeah. So we were in Shenandoah National Park and we saw a little baby bear cub, maybe Aww. two. We couldn't Aww. tell. Um, so yeah, it just, that makes me want to go hiking. So I, maybe I could get in another hike or two. Mm-hmm. Let's see. That is not on my summer to do list. <laughs> my my summer to do list uh, involve, also involves some some summer cooking because I've been to like mm. one summer cookout yeah. essentially, and that's it. And I j- again, I remember back in the day, you know, I, I one of the first things I ever invited Marshall to go do when I was back in college in summertime, and uh, was I invited him over for a margarita and steak night. Like, oh. we were going to grill out steaks, make fresh margaritas, and all hang out. And it was, like, a whole group during the summertime because somehow that fit. And, like, I literally don't think I've had, like, a margarita and steak party since. You've like, had, what is wrong with you? Have me a blast. Summer loving happens so fast. Um, yeah. Uh, also, maybe this goes with a little bit of our hidden gems, uh, but also on my summer checklist is a uh, movie night at local breweries those are really fun the oh, tailgate yes, that's right there tailgate, are a couple places like that tailgate brewery uh this friday night i'm gonna go watch the goonies and eat pizza and drink Ooh, they have the best pineapple cider there yeah so good um actually yeah that's also on my summer checklist i have yet to go to the drive-in this summer <gasps> and oh. like Lindsay and i we used to go all the time especially yeah. during the summertime so and I watch feel all like- the scary movies yeah, I feel like that needs to be on the list at some point. Like, mm-hmm. maybe not month of July because that's definitely going to go by way quick, <laughs> especially with hot. the trip coming up. But I feel like by end of August, my goal is to at least make it to the drive-in once. Can you yeah. take champagne? Uh, we can sneak it you in. You have to sneak it. I've never so... been to the drive-in. Oh. <gasps> have you not? No. Oh my gosh, it's, right. it's perfect for the summertime. Mm-hmm. That's definitely going to happen then because that's going to start us driving is, is like one of our favorites mm-hmm. and it's like a 45 minute drive out there but it's so worth it mm-hmm. okay so worth well it. done we're gonna do that and take some champagne in, and maybe we can podcast from it all right we need um yeah jess's drink and thinking cap yeah any inspiration from all this summer talk i would say so friends so after all this talk about summer checklist um there is one thing left that's on my summer checklist that we haven't talked about yet uh popsicles oh yeah right so i have a friend actually a listener lizzie that is visiting very soon from florida and she is bringing me a popsicle maker oh oh that sounds i know from the pamper chef so uh we're gonna get together and we're gonna concoct some champagne popsicles to try and I cannot wait to do it. Well, I really want to meet this Lizzie. She sounds amazing. Me yeah. Too. And I want to assist and eat some popsicles. Great. So that is just a drink and thinking cap. I, I think that uh, popsicle making is definitely a thing that Froze should happen. popsicles? Just saying. Yes. Froze popsicles. I think we should, uh, we're definitely going to try it with some different champagnes. Mm. Try out some different flavors. Maybe put some fruit in there. Ooh, maybe throw in some of those essential oils again. Right. Do some essential oils. And maybe even try out some gummy bear ones. <gasps> yes. I would love that. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. I mean, before the summer is over. So I'm really excited. I know Lizzie is uh, excited too. So I can't wait. So that is Jess's drink and thinking cap this week. Woo! So stay tuned, listeners. Uh, can't wait. There's probably going to be a video too. Yes. It's time for drink about it. Bubbles for your troubles. <laughs> Cheers to the beers. <laughs> <laughs> so, or the bears. I don't know. The bears. <laughs> or the bears. <laughs> so... What are we drinking about this week, ladies? <laughs> Let's start with you, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, my God, this heat. Yes. <laughs> um. So our air conditioner. So two weeks ago, it went out upstairs. It was 95 degrees in our bedroom, y'all. So we had to move everything downstairs. So we have a new baby. So like everything downstairs. Oh, my. Uh, for about four days, they fixed it. Two days later, it went out again. Oh, no. So, my niece is moving in with us. She's 23, and her boyfriend stays with her a lot. 
And so we had to do the air mattress. So you should have seen our living room. Good old camp out. Yeah. And when my husband called, they're like, oh, we don't come unless it's emergency. He's like, we have a new baby. Like, please come. And they came and they're like, oh, you have a leak. We can't fix it until next week. We just filled it with Freon. It should be good till then. So they came today and they're like, oh, no, it's working fine. There is no leak. We're like, whew, okay, great. Just out of Freon. Nice. Three hours later, the downstairs air went out. Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Wow. Screw my life. That is like a really odd coincidence. Like, no, that is called Lindsay's life right now. Oh, no. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. Anything that could go wrong will go wrong. And then it will go wrong eight more times. <laughs> that does definitely seems like the, I've, uh, the older I've gotten, the uh, when it rains, it pours like thing has definitely like had so much more new meaning because it's yeah, very true. It is true. It's not like when you're in your teens and you think the whole world's ending and your boyfriend's broken up with you and your parents embarrassed you or anything like that. No, like adults, it's like real problems. Mm-hmm. And when it rains, it pours and your AC breaks twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What else? What are y'all drinking about? Um, so mine's, you know, it's kind of, I can't complain too much. So I just got back from multiple trips. So yay. Yay, I know. I know. Um, but like, I don't have any more trips left for the summer. Womp womp. So I'm finally like having to settle back into work and we have all kinds of like internal projects going on. So I'm really having to like play catch up now. Um, so it's just, it's kind of like a drag and I'm just, So it's just kind of like having to get back to the work cycle. So I'm just trying to like stay positive and trying to look uh, forward to the fun things on the weekends, like from the summer checklist that we just talked about. Um, yeah, so it's my drink about it. it's kind of like womp womp work in the summer. <laughs> Aww. Well, I got two drink about it. All, All right. right. So I'm gonna go with super, super happy one first. Okay. Cool. 16 days till Seattle and Alaska. Yes. Street vacation. So I am super excited about that. Yeah. Um, Also, because we've been talking about this horrible, ridiculous heat. I'm going to Seattle and Alaska. I hate you right now. <laughs> you should. You know what? If I was in anyone else's shoes, I'd hate me too. Because this is going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm jealous of both of you for going on grand vacations this year. Well, we have def- definitely thank one of our friends for for encouraging us to get out and do this trip because it's one that I've always wanted to take. So I am super excited, although it is definitely super expensive, but I'm trying not to think about all of that. <laughs> well, y'all deserve it. But it's it's one of those things where it's like, I, I, I never regret the money I spend on taking mm-hmm. a really nice trip. You know, the memories are worth it every time. Absolutely. So... Yeah, I'm going to go with it. And Seattle and Alaska are going to be awesome. And I have looked up the temperatures and they are like highs or low 80s, like 80 or high 70s. Like it's still hot. Like the lows. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like perfect temperature. Yeah, for me. that's great. Like, super happy about that. The lows are going to be, you know, probably in your 50s and 60s and stuff. Uh, maybe down to the 40s once we get really Ooh, up yeah, north. But 40s. I'm super, super excited about it. The whole weird thing about it is I looked up like the sunset and the the sunrise because I was told like there's so little of uh, darkness at this time of year up there. Mm. So like at max, there's going to be like four hours of darkness. So like it's weird to me now getting off work sometimes around like seven o'clock and like driving home and it's still being like bright out where it feels like it's like five o'clock in the evening, not like 738 up there. It's going to be like 1130 at night and it's going to be just like the sun setting. So I feel like that's going to really screw up my <laughs> my sleep schedule. But at the same time, I'm kind of like super excited about screw it. Screw your sleep schedule. I know, right? Just live it care. up. Live it up on your trip. It's like a really long trip, too. So I'm super excited because we're going up to Seattle for like three days before the, the cruise. And then we're doing the Alaskan cruise, which is seven days. And then oh. we have one more day in Seattle before we fly Meh. back. So, so jealous. Amazing. Yeah, super excited. So cheers to that. Yes. Um. The other drink about it is that I probably had the most adult and like slightly boring 4th of July (laughs) and I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like like part of me is like, yay, super excited because we went and took advantage of like 4th of July sales, not like your clothing sales like I used to enjoy when I was younger. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, but um, we went and bought kitchen appliances. We bought a brand new fridge, which is our first brand new fridge ever. Wow. And a brand new dishwasher. Uh, we got really great deals on them because uh, 
of the holiday. And so that was really awesome. But our day was not spent by the pool, by the lake, or even doing something simple like going to see a movie. I we, was texting her by the pool. <laughs> she, she did text me by the pool and enticing me to go out. But we bounced between like Lowe's and, and Best Buy trying to find like the best deal <laughs> on these appliances. And I mean, my husband had been sick too. So we didn't really want to go out and do too much, you know, because it was so, yeah. so hot. Like we had a record high that day. So we decided to keep it chill and do that. But afterwards, I was like, Wow. That had to have been like the most dull <laughs> adult Fourth of July I've ever had. And so I have very mixed feelings about this. Like super proud I got a really, really good deal, but also super sad because I thought that was more important than going to a pool. Oh. Hey, well, cheers to your adulting. Yes, cheers to adulting. Cheers. That is correct. <laughs> so I have another drink about it, you guys. Rory is growing up so fast. Uh, like she gets her license next month <gasps> no all right that's what it feels like she's like almost sitting up on her own and she's eating cereal out of a spoon wow. whoa i, mean, I yelled at her yesterday i'm like stop growing so fast she is so adorable though she is adorable yeah you have like the cutest baby yeah i posted a picture of her on our instagram account so if you guys want to see how adorable she looked on fourth of july just you know take a look in her little mini mouse bathing suit with her Minnie Mouse bow and her big sunglasses. She is going to be a little fashionista. She mm-hmm. she carries a bow like so well. Doesn't she? Yeah. Like, not all babies can do the big bow thing. Like not all babies can do the little bow thing. But your baby? But my baby can. Yeah. She can. She she is botacular. I love it. <laughs> botacular. That's right. Love I made it. a whole word for her. I like it. Love it. <laughs> So, cheers to your baby. Cheers. <laughs> and her big bow. Cheers, Rui. Cheers. All right. It's champagne trivia. Champagne trivia. All right. What was the question last week, guys? Um, I've drank since then. I will give you a hint. <laughs> Jess said the answer was a champagne condom. It was something about the cage. Oh, that's right. It was the cage and like the wrapper or something that yeah, goes over the top of the bottle. Yeah, what is it called? The bottle? that little wire caging over the champagne cork? I'm going with cork helmet. You said cork helmet. I'm still going with the condom. Champagne con- con- <laughs> condom. <laughs> it's a mousselet. What a Whoa. what? A mousselet. I don't remember seeing a mousse on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's French. I don't know if I'm saying it right. M U S E L. E.T. I feel like that was correct. Mousselet. <laughs> Why are all these words French? Because champagne was originated champagne in France. <sighs> Duh. <laughs> so our new question actually has to do with the mousselet. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So how do you know if you are opening a quality bottle of champagne? And the hint is it has to do with the mousselet. Yeah. Mm. My guess is that it has one. Because <laughs> there are some bottles that don't. You know, they've got like true. the plastic corks that screw on or like the... I'm going to go with it has one. I'm going to say something about how tight the mousselet is. Ooh. All right. There's their guesses. What's yours? Find out next episode what the answer is. Um, and please go on to our social media uh, where you can guess. Yeah, and I'm, um, we might be doing a little giveaway. Yes, that's right. So answer the trivia question to the best of your knowledge. Try not to Google it. No cheaters. Otherwise, we'll just like pick at random. Yeah. <laughs> so what we may or may not talk about next episode. Did Lindsay and I ever go floating down the stream behind Jess and her fiance as they tow us and we shotgun beers and Sophia's? I hope so. <laughs> I hope Ooh, so, too. We could shotgun a Sophia. That could be fun. Duh. Just saying. Did I ever get to use my wonderful magical unicorn tube? Did Lindsay go relive her college experience? Did any of us relive our college experiences and live to tell the tale? Let's face it. We're older. We can't hang as well. <laughs> did, did the peg leg stripper ever go into the pirate business? Mm. Ooh. These questions may or may not be answered in our next podcast episode. So stay tuned. 
Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Be sure to like, subscribe, um, and follow us. Um, You can find our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or our website, www.thechampagneway.com. And be sure to follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram for all of our latest happenings at The Champagne Way. And you can also find us on Facebook at The Champagne Way. So be sure to go on social medias and follow us, comment on our posts. Uh, We would like to make this a very interactive podcast. So please be sure to also submit your drink about it and your champagne shout outs. And answer the champagne trivia question. And thanks to our producer and engineer, Marshall Widener from The Second Sound. Mr. Marshmallow, we love you. And Trina Pat. (laughs) Appreciate you. Yes, yes. Hooray. Bye, guys. We love you. Oh, I forgot a drink about it. What's that? Y'all, I'm so mad at Trump. And this is not political, so it's okay to talk about. Okay. Okay. So last night, I'm enjoying The Bachelorette. (sighs) And guess who? Pops up and interrupts it. <laughs> Trump. Trump picking his new Supreme Court person. And guess would not finish recording. So I don't even know who got kicked off last night. Oh. Oh, they didn't come back and show it? Well, my recording only went till nine and I oh. pushed it. So he completely messed up my recording. They interrupted the Bachelorette for that nonsense? Yes. Gosh. That's the worst. The news. So worst. Supreme Court nomination. They Blah. only do that because they know the Bachelor gets more viewers than anything coming on with politics. God, he That's hates probably that actually too. Really true. 